Good morning, LifeGate. How are you today? Is everybody doing well? Are you in the house? There you are. I can't see anybody today. I don't know. The lights are really bright up here. But welcome to this weekend that we call Labor Day, to this three-day weekend that some have taken off to be with family and friends, get in that last vacation before some schools start or have already started, and they said, one more last time, we're gonna go camping to the beach, to the amusement parks, whatever that is, but we're glad you're here with us this morning. For those of you that are online, we welcome you, and we just praise you for being there faithfully every week, worshiping with us. This morning, we have a guest worship leader, Jonathan, and yes, give him a hand. Uh, Jonathan came and led worship for our youth a couple of months ago, and he's a Life Pacific University graduate who is in transition right now. But thank you, Jonathan, for coming and helping us in this time of need. Will you stand with me as we get ready to worship this morning? It's such an honor to come into the house of the Lord and begin to worship and praise him. You know, the Bible tells us in his word that in every season, we are to praise him. And so today in this gloomy Sunday, we're going to praise him. No matter what's happening in your life for this next hour and a half, you're going to focus. And, and you have to say that yourself. I am focusing on being with Jesus in this moment and worshiping him and giving all my attention to him 100%. Amen? Amen. Will you do that with me this morning? Father, we thank you that we come in here right now and we turn our thoughts off to the things we have to do later, the places we need to go, the things that we're hanging out with our friends later and going to do. And we give you the next hour and a half to worship you, to exalt you, to sit at your feet and to let you just love on us to remind us of who you are and, and what you're doing and what you are going to do in our lives. And so today, we surrender our time, our thoughts, and our attention to you. And we thank you for it in your name. Amen. Uh, hey, good morning, everybody. Who's ready to worship the King of Kings this morning? I know I am. Come on, can we just, if you're not standing yet, can you just stand to your feet? And just begin to um, invite the Spirit into your heart. He's already in this space, but begin to welcome Him into your own heart. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the breath in our lungs, the breath in our lungs, the breath in our lungs. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sing this with me. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't, he won't, I've still got joy in chaos, I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I've built my life on Jesus And He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So 
the rock on which I stand. Everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad. I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. Faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He Stories that have proved your faithfulness Ooh. And I see miracles no mind can comprehend And there is beauty in what I can understand Jesus hits you Jesus hits you And I believe you're the wonder you're the wonder-working God All the miracles I've seen Too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God And you heal because you love All the miracles I've seen Too good to not believe Too good to not believe Too good to not believe And I can resurrect the man with my own hands But just the mention of your name can raise the dead <laughs> So all the glory to the only one who can Jesus, it's you, come on Oh Jesus, it's you
Don't you tell me he can't do it I've seen cancer disappear I've seen broken bodies healed Don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you tell me he can't do it I've seen troubled souls delivered I've seen addicts finally freed well, Don't you tell me he can't do it well, Don't you tell me Someone needs to hear this this morning. Listen, sometimes it's not about what's happening up here. It's about what's happening in our hearts. I believe that the Lord is speaking to someone this morning. I believe there's someone here this morning who has been praying and interceding for a miracle and stopped asking because they just, they just got tired of asking. I just hear the Lord saying this morning, I dare you to ask again. It says that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, that's more than enough to move a mountain. So what if we came this morning with big faith saying, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask again, because I believe in a God who is more than able, more than able, more than able, more than able. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's sing this chorus. And I believe you're the one do working, God. You're the one do working, God. The miracles I see. Too good to not believe You're the one to work in God You heal because you love The miracles I've seen Too good to not believe Too good to not believe Too good to not believe After everything I've seen too good to not believe, too good to not believe, too good to not believe. 
My God will never fail me. He'll never fail me. He never will. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working Even when I can't see it, you're working Even when I can't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I can't see it, you're working Even when I can't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I can't see it, you're working Even when I can't feel it, you're working you never stop you never stop working cuz nothing is as strong as your blood and nothing is as strong as your blood and nothing is as strong as your blood no as strong as your blood. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. And song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you
Yes, he's a firm foundation. Oh, he's a firm foundation. All the ground is sinking sand. All the ground is sinking sand. There's no one like our Jesus. There's no one like our Jesus. There's no one like our Jesus. Oh, I It's just the voices. I will put in my. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, just the voices. Let's keep singing that this morning. Come on. I will build. I will. Upon your love, upon your life. I will put my trust in you alone, I will. And I will not be shaken. Good morning, Lord. Oh, good morning, Lord. Yes, praise Him, exalt Him with your clapping, with your shouts, with your joy of expression of what he's done for you. You know, we sang some songs this morning that declared what we believe. I want to know if you could turn the house lights up for me, please. How many of you are a miracle today? God's healed you. God's healed your body. God's healed your body. Raise your hands. Let me see them. Yes. 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 Is it a once and for all healing? No, it's a daily healing. We sang, he's healed my cancer. He's healed my family. He's healed drug addictions, relationships, all those things. But we have to choose to daily walk in that and believe it and thank him for it. Even when the storms come in. We started out with firm foundation and we ended with I'll build a firm foundation. How appropriate is that today? I'll build my life upon a firm foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, that's this word. It's his word. It's not the pastor's words. 
It's what's written in this book that we call the Bible. Our guide, our handbook to living this Christian life. I shared with the prayer group yesterday morning and I was debating whether or not to share it. But in light of how Jonathan has so led us this morning, I feel like it's appropriate. And in, I know this is a familiar passage of scripture, but in Romans chapter eight, verses 35 through 39, it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? And when I was sharing that, as I was reading it this week, when I was doing my devotions on Friday morning, the Lord spoke to me and he said, Declare this to the church. Nothing can separate us. The world may try to separate us with the pandemic from worshiping and coming together. There may be a hurricane that's going to hit us, but it didn't. There was an earthquake that shook a little bit, but did it shake you up enough that you said, Lord, thank you that I survived the quake. I survived the fire. And you were in the still small voice. See, it's written right here to the early church. What, who can separate me from the love of God? Nothing or no one, only myself. Say, only myself. Say that, declare it. Only myself can separate me from the love of God. I can't blame anybody else. But this morning we're declaring that none of these things can or will because we're standing on a firm foundation verse 37 says yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through who through jesus not through ourselves but through jesus so today as he he prophetically spoke that there was somebody here if you would just be so brave to say that was me maybe it was online but you said that's me i'm that person that needs to be touched today is there anybody here that you've been struggling, you've been questioning, you've been wrestling? Maybe it's a personal thing. Yes, back here. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, right here. Anybody else? Right here. Anybody else? Yeah. See? We're not alone in this. I'm going to take liberty, and I know my husband will let me. Would you please come to the altar, those that raise your hands? Come to the altar. Come on, Jonathan's going to flow with the Spirit. I know. I'm not going to worry about him. He's not going to worry about me. He knows what to do. I want you to come. I want you to stand right here. And I want you to declare, I will not let anything separate me from the love of God. Whether it's a physical ailment, whether it's a situation that's going on, whether it's something I'm believing for, for a miracle. Now, I'm going to ask for some of you that are elders in the church that you'll come and stand behind them and pray with them. Sessie, come on. Gloria, come on. We're going to put you to your, what you've been learning in Bible college. Come on. Walter. Where's uh, Esther? Come on, Esther. I don't see her. And I'm going to ask him to sing this again, or whatever you feel led, as we pray for them. Lord wants to do something here today. Jonathan and I did not talk this week. In fact, I only met him about 10 minutes ago. But God is orchestrating our service today. And we're going to let him. So these things that are heavy on your heart, surrender them now. You don't need to confess to the persons in standing in agreement with you. You just need to pray to him. And they're going to agree that at this moment, as you say, I surrender. And you begin to surrender. You're a firm foundation. You're a firm Thank you, Jesus. Surrender that thing to him. Thank you, Jesus. Surrender that. You're Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're a firm Thank foundation. You, Lord, meet them. You're a firm foundation. All the ground is sinking sand. All the ground is sinking sand. I put my trust on the one named Jesus, the healer, the savior, the redeemer, the author, the finisher and perfecter of your faith. Healing power, healing power, healing power. 
Cause I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. You're more than enough for me. Oh, Jesus, you're all I need. 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 Oh, Jesus, you're all Oh, Jesus, you're all I need. Oh, Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all Cause when I doubt it, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. Cause you're an artist. Declare that as you're in the audience right now. You claim it for yourself. Amen. I know nothing has been wasted, no failure or mistake. Cause you're an artist and a part of I'm the canvas and the clay Cause you're an artist and a potter I'm the canvas and the clay Oh, you're an artist and a potter I'm the canvas and the clay Oh, you're an artist and a potter I'm the canvas and the clay Oh, you're an artist and a potter I'm the canvas and the clay Cause you're an artist and a part of the canvas and the clay. You're an artist and a part of the canvas and the clay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you meet us right where we are. That we can interrupt what we're doing to have that encounter as you lead by your Holy Spirit. And I pray for those in the audience today, Lord, those online that are struggling, that are fighting cancer, for Michelle, Lord, that you would reach down and touch her today, Lord. You're her only hope, Lord, that you would reach her and you would touch her in such a way, Lord, that only you can do. Lord, for Barbara, who responded to a text message and is in need of prayer, her and her son, that you would reach them and you would touch them via the airwaves. Through the live stream, Lord, that you would heal them today, Lord. Lord, for others that are going through situations that they just can't seem to get over, Lord, I pray that you would meet them. I pray for Richard, our worship leader, who is out today and, and had rotator cuff surgery, that you would touch him, Lord, and that you would meet him. And Lord, I know he's online right now. And Richard, just know your church is praying with you and standing with you during this time of recovery. And we thank you, Lord, that you're going to repair and make that shoulder new. I thank you for Sylvia that's here today that just had that same surgery, Lord, that you're going to complete the work that you've started in that shoulder, Lord, and that she's here today as a testament of what you're doing in her body, Lord. And I thank you that you brought her through and that you have greater things in store for her. Thank you, Lord. For others that are not with us today, whatever the reason may be, that they're traveling, give them traveling mercies. Lord, for those that are just trying to get caught up from summer and say, school starting on Tuesday for my kids and I'm trying to get everything ready or for myself if I'm going back to college. Lord, meet them. But Lord, may they go back to this very simple scripture that says, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors if we keep our eyes fixed on you, not on the circumstances, but on you. 
Thank you for your word that stands true. Thank you for your word that is sharp and it cuts through to those places that need to be cut out. We thank you for the word that comes and heals and takes the scab off and permanently heals a situation. Yes, there might be pain from time to time as we learned in our Bible study this last week, but Lord, that you, it's a reminder that you met us at that place as you did today and as you will continue as we go throughout our service this morning. We thank you for that in your name. Amen. Amen. Wow. I just want to just continue just to worship, to enter into that, but I know we need to kind of flow with what we all came here for. You know, this week is, uh, it's been a very interesting week. Pastor and I and, and Pastor Carly were involved in some um, meetings for Foursquare and for specifically for our Western District. And some days those meetings were kind of hard and discouraging, and other days they were uplifting and, and just full of life. And it was great to be with brothers and sisters and to know that you weren't in the trenches alone. So today I want you to take that on for yourselves. You're not in the trenches alone. We're in this battle together, but we have a great commander-in-chief who's leading us. And if we keep, I can't help but get that image out of my mind, keep focused on him, not the situation that's going on. I just love how he uses his word and he illuminates it and he brings it up. Even if it's a passage that we've read over and over again, there's truth in this passage of scripture. And I want you to go home and just meditate it and chew on it. Chew on it like a cow does and spit it out and chew it again. Because that means you got to get it. Get all the nutrients out of it. And if you don't, if you weren't, if you're just joining us or you just came in, it's Romans chapter 8, starting with verse 35 to verse 39. Verse 39 says, neither height nor depth, neither height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. That's your hope today. Nothing. Again, say it, nothing can separate me. Nothing. If I allow it, yes, but I'm in control. You're in control of your own destiny. Well, we will move along. I, I could start preaching. I better, I better hold on here. Um, I have several very important announcements to make today as you're getting ready to prepare to give to the Lord. We are in the last quarter of 2023. How did that happen? How did we get to September already and go, whoa, what happened to the first eight months of the year? For the last eight months, the last four months, I want to declare today is going to be life giving to you if you'll receive it. Declare that life giving. In the fall, things die so that new life can come. In the fall, things turn, change color, change, make that adjustment. I love fall. It's kind of one of the things I don't like about living in Southern California, but it's probably one of the only things I don't like because I love the four seasons. I love fall especially because it's just such a reminder that I have to die to self so that he can rise within me. So I'm encouraging you to do that. So how can we do that together as a church? Well, one of the ways is come to Tuesday night ladies Bible study. We had an amazing time Tuesday night. And I know some of you didn't make it. We meet in the kids' theater in the back. Park in the back parking lot. Come in that door. This door will be locked up here on Tuesday nights. We start at 6.30 sharp. We are in a video-driven Bible study by Natalie Runyon on Raised to Stay. You were raised to stay in the church that he called you to and he planted you in. You were raised to do that. Come and find out what that's about. Read chapter three in your book, and we're doing lesson three this week. Friday night, ladies hang out. Woohoo! Come on, girlfriends. We're going to meet at my house at seven o'clock. Bring your favorite dessert. We'll provide the beverages. We're going to have a time of just hanging out. We'll probably talk about Tuesday night Bible study. We'll probably talk about other things. We'll end in prayer. 
And if the weather stays like it is, we'll have a fire pit and maybe have some mores. And um, just come and have a good time. Um, if you need the address, we will privately text it to you so you'll know where to come. Next Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but on September 12th, Men's Zoom Bible Study. Men, if you, don't, if you have not been on yet, get on. Enjoy it. I know sometimes we're Zoom fatigued. But this is one way that men have been able to get together collectively. And then once a month, they get together. And on Saturday, the 16th, they're going to be having a men's breakfast here at the church. The slide was up on the board earlier. And we want you to do that. And I would like for you to sign up for Friday night so we have a count. And the men need you to sign up for Saturday so they have a count. And those sign-up sheets are outside on the check-in table when you came in and be a part of that. As you have an opportunity to give back to the Lord today, I want us to um, remember... One key essential part of giving back to the Lord, and that's obedience. We do a lot of things out of obedience, and we do a lot of things out of sacrifice. Sometimes I'll sacrifice sleep to take, for a, a grand, take care of a grandchild. I'll let them sleep with me, and they, then I don't sleep. <laughs> you hear me? But we sacrifice. But God says, I want you to be obedient, and that obedience is better than sacrifice. Because when I sacrifice, I can grumble and complain. But when I'm obedient, I'm doing what I know I'm supposed to do. And he says, in obedience, we come and we bring our tithe to the storehouse. In obedience, we come and fellowship so that we will be encouraged and lifted up. In obedience, we find that niche we're supposed to be in and we serve with our talents and with our gifts. So this morning as you're bringing your first fruits of your labor into the house, know that he's gonna honor your obedience. He's gonna honor your obedience. We will be continuing to talk about missions later on in the month and, and helping with, um, excuse me, Foursquare Relief to Hawaii. Um, but if you have that today, you just mark your envelope. As the ushers come forward, we're gonna wait on you for your tithes and offerings this morning. Father, we thank you that we come in obedience to your word. We come bringing our gifts that you've provided for us. Lord, none of us are homeless that are in this room right now. We have a home in you. We have fellowship with you. And we have a church that can care and help us in our journey. So we thank you for that today. Lord, I thank you that in your word when it says... That when we bring in the first fruits of our labor, that you bless us beyond measure. I don't know what that looks like for my brothers and sisters. I only know what that looks like for me. But I know out of obedience, as Pastor and I have been obedient in this area, you have always met every need that we've had. And as our testimony is shared, may it impact those that are here today. We thank you for this, that we have the privilege of being able to come obediently and hilariously giving to the Lord, saying, thank you. I don't know, God. I don't know, but I'm going to do it out of obedience and watch you perform miracles. Thank you for that in your name. Amen. And as the ushers are coming by, for those of you that are in line this morning, we will be taking communion at the end of the service. You can prepare by getting elements in your home that you may be able to uh, use to participate, whether it's water, juice, crackers, bread, just at that point, you'll know you'll be prepared if you could do that and get ready now. If you're online and you have a prayer request, type it in the box and we'll make sure to pray for you. And we are continuing to pray for our dear sister. I just looked and I saw Isabel over here and I went, oh, Lenore, we need to continue to pray for Lenore as she had back surgery and she's at home recovering. And, and we, just, we just pray for her today, Lord, touch Lenore, our sister, as she's gone through this very tedious um, surgery on her back, Lord, that you bring recovery to her. Amen? So if you're missing her, just know that she's, that's where she is. Would you stand with me as our dear friend Jonathan leads us in another song of worship before Pastor Larry comes? And Father of kindness, you have 
poured out grace You brought me out of darkness You have filled me with peace And giver of mercy You're my help in time of need Lord, I can't help but sing Faithful you are and faithful forever you will be and faithful you are and all your promises are yes and amen all your promises are yes and amen
mercies are yes and amen. Come on. All his promises. Think about all those promises. Some you've already realized. There's others that you have not. There's still more promises for you. God has always been faithful and he will continue to complete his good work in you. That's what he says, right? That he'll continue to work things through and complete what he started in you. And God wants to do that. He has got promises for you. And he wants you to realize them. He wants you to take them as yours and, and, and allow God to do those very things in your, in your life. Now we sang some powerful songs this morning. Some songs that mention what God has done, will do, as he's been faithful, and then he's calling us to walk in that faithfulness as well. That's something he shares with us. That's one of his attributes. He's faithful, and we can be faithful too. He's loving, and we can be loving too. He's truthful, and we can be truthful too. These are attributes of the Lord that he has shared with us, and he wants us to move in them. But why don't we, I mean, we, we can always just take what he promises and say, God, you promised that, so. Uh, what's the song, honey? Uh, promise Every verse, every line. I'm trusting in his love divine. Every promise in the book is mine, mine, mine. Jesus is mine. Mine all the time. He is wonderful, wonderful Jesus to me. But every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. I'm trusting in his love divine. His promises are mine. Wow. There's so many songs written about promises, written about faithfulness. Can we crank that up one, one, one more time? Yeah. Come on, would you sing out? Sing it out with the, the loudest your voice can go. I mean, just, just hang on to these words and just shout them out there. Take them through the rafters this morning. Because there's something that when we engage in this, when we engage in worship, and when we engage in these declarations, there's something that happens. There's a transformation that happens in us. I know, I know, I know, I know that it's going to be mine. So for whatever that promise may be to you, the thing that you're holding on to, declare that this morning as you're singing out this song. Amen? Can we do that one more time? Come on. He's faithful. And faithful you are. And faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. All your promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. All your promises. All your promises are yes and amen. One more time. All your promises, all your promises are yes and amen. For you that are going through trials and difficulties this morning, know that Jesus has given you a promise that he will take you right through it. It doesn't matter how strong you are, Jesus is strong for you. Doesn't matter what we sense about, I, I just don't sense I can do this. You don't have to do it. Jesus promised to be your strength, to be your guide, to be your, your help in time of trouble, to be your strong tower. He has given you those promises that he'll take you through. You that are going through some physical ailments in your body, Jesus promised that he will heal you. Give it to him this morning. We prayed for some, of, some people this morning, but there are many more that raised their hands. You know what? Just receive from the Lord today for whatever promise you need right now. Some of you are struggling with an individual that just, you're ready to bite their head off because they've bitten yours. And you're just, you, you've just had it up to here. But you know what God tells us to do? Love your enemies. Bless them. Pray for them. And God will give you the strength in the midst of that, those feelings to turn that around and begin to love on these people and care for them like you've never cared before. 
and the climate will change. The things going on will change. I know there's hurtful things that have happened. I know there's frustrating things that have happened. I know how people sometimes treat people and sometimes even, even brothers and sisters. And if that's you, get it right this morning and ask God's forgiveness. Turn that around and get it right. Today's a day of transformation, of wholeness. Every time we come into the presence of Jesus, he wants to do something new and fresh in our lives. Some of you are saying, you're getting closer and closer to that edge, Pastor. But I'm doing that for a reason. Because sometimes we come so close to the edge and, 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 and we stop. Where God wants us to just give it all to him. He wants us to jump in. I'm not going to do it because I know some of the limitations on my knees. And you'll have to pick me up off the floor and bring me back up here again. But it's an illustration of saying, you know what? How close can we get? But then we just draw back and say, no more. Huh? How, how many times do we do that? Well, I'm so close to doing this. I'm so close to serving God this way. I'm so close to walking in this. I'm so close to releasing that to him. I'm so close to just loving on that person. But you know what? Just got, and they just did one more thing, and so I withdraw again. Come on, people. Is that true? Is it true? Maybe not for all of you, but at some time in the past it has been. But some of you are going through things right now, and God just saying, give it all to him. And love with all you can. Because Jesus wants us to do that. He's given us that capacity through the power of his spirit, through the anointing of God upon each one of your lives. You have that capacity to love on people that way and to serve them that way. And believe me, I can be right there with you if I'm not careful to just say, you know what, enough's enough. And like Popeye, it's all I can stand and I can't stand no more. So he goes and beats up Brutus. But is that what he's called us to? He takes his spinach and he handles it. But you know what? God doesn't want us to eat our spinach. He wants us to take part of the power of the Holy Spirit to love and care and see transformation happen that way. Not by brutality, but by love. By love. Faithful He is. All His promises are yes and amen. Jesus, even right now, Lord, we just submit ourselves to you. This is somewhat of a pre-altar call and not to have people come forward, but right where you are, a standing altar call to say, Lord, I'm submitting this area of my life to you. I'm submitting these things to you. I'm, re I'm realizing the promises that you have for me and I'm taking hold of that. The frustrations in my life, God, I'm giving those to you to act in the way that you've called me to so that things can happen differently in, in the situation, in the relationship that I have with these individuals at work, at home, uh, different places around me, with different people around me. But God, you have a better way. You made a way. You made a way. You showed your love upon the cross. Jesus, here I am to say, Lord, I believe you can bring me to that place to where I can love people and sacrifice my own self for others, to give of myself, to love my enemies, to care for others in the way that you do. So Jesus, here I am submitting to you, allowing you to reshape me, remake me, and do something fresh and new in my life that I may be a blessing to others in the way that you are, that they may come to know you, and then we can walk hand in hand as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. That's our goal. Lord, that's my goal, to see people come to you, that they would come to know you and walk with you. Many have turned away, but Lord, we aren't to just lay them aside. We're to go after them and love on them and care for them so that they can come back into the fold. Leave the 99 and go to the one and help them and bring them in. So Jesus, we know these things. You've taught them to us. Let us implement your teachings in our lives so that we can fulfill what you've called us to do and how we can do that effectively for the sake of others and them coming to Jesus. We give you praise and thanks for this.
In Jesus' name. Bless us as we take hold of your word. As you teach us this morning, we pray. Strengthen us, build us up, and release us to do the work you've called us to. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, greet somebody around you before you're seated. Bless somebody. Amen. All right. It's good to see you all here this morning. What a great crowd, and it's wonderful. You can turn my FX down just a little bit there when you get back there, just the, the purple one there. Yeah, just a little bit. Good. That's great. Not too much, but just a little bit. Take the edge off. All right. Perfect. And um, I asked you to do something last week. What is one of the things I asked you to do last week? You don't remember you didn't do it. So, What's one of the things I asked you guys to do this week? Well, let me ask this question. How many of you brought somebody with you today? How many of you brought somebody with you today? Yeah? Who'd you bring with you? What's that? Your daughter. Yeah. Yeah, Lou's daughter. Lou's daughter's here. Hello. How are you? And I met you earlier, and it's great to have you with us this morning. Yeah. Is that one of the things I asked you to do this week, is to bring somebody with you? How many of you remember that? How many don't remember that? Wow. You know what? It's online. Go back and listen to it again. Okay. And <laughs> all right. Now you get to listen to a whole message all over again. Or go to the end of it. You can do that too. You can just skip forward. Thank you, Kyle, for doing that and all of our team. Thank you guys for your recordings and doing all the work that you do. Give the whole tech team a big hand. Would you do that? They do a lot of work. And then give the worship team a big hand as well. And another big shout out to Jonathan. So uh, yeah, give it up for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It's great to have you all in the house this morning, and we're going to have a, a blessed time as we uh, walk in, uh, through the scriptures this morning once again. We are so blessed to have you all here because it takes all of us to uh, make things happen around here. Your presence, your giving of yourselves and your ministries and the tithes and offerings and all of those kinds of things are just so helpful to allow us to keep doing what God's called us to do. So I, I can't do what, I've, what God has called me to do without your partnership. And because, uh, I mean, it wouldn't do me any good to preach to a church of empty, emptiness, right? But to preach to open people so that you guys can go out and do what God has called you to do. And, and I preach to myself. So I will continue to do that. And so uh, anyway, let's keep uh, moving that, that way. Amen? So church, as I love to say, good morning, church. Yeah, so LifeGate's a great place to be, and it's so good to be with you here in the presence of Jesus together. You know, we're on a journey, a journey that will change our lives and the lives of others that you meet along the way. You meet people all the time, and your life transforms their lives as you meet them and you grace them and you introduce them to Jesus Christ. Some people may have heard of him. Some people may have known him in the past. But when you introduce them or reintroduce them to Jesus, it makes a difference in their lives. I want to give a shout out to my friend Eric, my young, young man here. It's good to have him back in the house today. Just came on down and made a trek down here just to be with us. And it's not an easy trek, but, it's, but we're so glad that you're here. Been part of our family, been part of our lives since he was just a young boy. Now he's a big striking man that uh, I don't want to face in an alley anywhere. So, uh, you know, at least not on bad terms, at least not on bad terms. And so, uh, but he's, uh, he's growing in the things of God and he's growing in, in the things that God's called him to and what he's doing in life. And so as, a, as kind of a park ranger and then also just uh, getting ready to go into the Sheriff's Academy. And so uh, we're blessed by you and your faithfulness and all that uh, God is putting on your heart to do. You know, we get to disciple people, to walk with them, to help deepen their relationship with Jesus. I want you to hear those words because we're going to read a portion of Scripture and talk about an individual for a little bit that, that wasn't engaged that way. You know, we've been going through the book of Acts and learning so much about the, the early church. And now we're in... Things keep falling off up here. And uh, I'm going to fall yet. And 
you know, in, the, in Acts chapter 8, we see some things. We start talking about Philip. We have come through the time where Stephen had died and, and had uh, given his life as a martyr. And, and uh, then we see, you know, the apostle, or not the apostle Paul, Saul come on the scene. And uh, chapter 9, we'll get into more of what happened with Paul and his life being turned around. Great story. So you can read ahead. You can read the book of Acts all the time. It's great because it's what God is doing in us. And, and you know, the series is called uh, The Acts and You. So the, the book of Acts and you, what God is doing in your life and letting these things be made new and fresh in us. And we're learning so much about the early church. We've seen the power of God come upon the church. We've seen the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is called the promise, being uh, received and beginning to do amazing works through the lives of the apostles and others. We've seen the, the church come alive with signs and wonders. We sang about all that stuff this morning. And I'm going like, I didn't tell Jonathan anything I was preaching on. I didn't tell him where, where we were in Acts, you know, Acts chapter 8. I didn't tell him what we were going to be talking about today. But he began to sing these songs of miracles and happenings and what God would do. And isn't that wonderful? That through worship, we begin to proclaim these things. We're going to study a little of it. And you know what? We're going to leave here walking in it. That's what I believe. You're going to walk out of here filled with the Holy Spirit in a way that you're going to go up to people that have an issue going on. You're going to pray for them and see a miracle happen. See people healed. See people transformed in their lives. See marriages healed. And that's going to come through you speaking and praying and ministering to people. That's what happened in the early church. That's the way lives were being touched. So the, we've seen the, the church come alive with these signs and wonders, and we've, we've come to understand more about the persecution of the church and the scattering of the Christians. We haven't faced a whole lot of persecution Oh, we get touches of it, a little here, a little there. We get, you know, things that, you know, they, they don't want certain things to happen. Uh, and, you know, they kind of want the church in some ways to kind of be quiet and be still. And, but you know what? We can still promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can still shout it out. And nobody's come and shut down our churches or anything like that. And they haven't quieted your mouth so that you can always share the things of God's word. So let's, you know, let's do what we can while we can without any problems, but sometimes it takes a little persecution to get, a, get us motivated, and that's what happened in the early church as well, to get out of their comfort zone of Jerusalem and move out in other areas. Where are you sitting in your comfort zone this morning? What's your comfort zone? Well, I come to church. My comfort zone is the third row and the fourth seat over. Nobody's sitting in that fourth seat over, so it doesn't matter. I made sure. And so, you know, third row, fourth seat over, and I'm just comfortable sitting there, a little air conditioning, whatever. Sometimes a little too warm. I have to fan myself. Sometimes a little too hot, and I got to, you know, cool myself down and all those kind of things. I mean, I, I'm comfortable, then I go home, and I just go about my business till next Sunday. Comfort zones. God wants to shake us up, people. He really wants to shake us up. He wants us to realize that we have a call on our lives. Every one of you believe, as believers in Jesus, every one of you that have given your life to Jesus and asked him to come into your heart and life, every one of you has a call of God upon your life. You say, oh, no, that's just the, for the pastor, or that's just for the worship team, or that's just for this person who does youth, or that's for that person who's doing women's ministry or men's ministry. They've got a call of God on their life. For me, I'm just, you know... I'm just moving along and excited to just, you know, show up. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's more. There's more. But you open yourself up to what God is specifically calling you to be a part of. Maybe it's ministry that's already going on. Maybe it's something else that's in line with the vision of the church that you want to step out in and we'll say, oh, what about this? I can do this 
I have these skills. God has given me a unique ability to do these kinds of things. How can we use that to bring people to Jesus? And not just sit back and say, well, I'm comfortable with what I am, but use your gifts and talents for Jesus. There's so much that's available for us to do. Believers have been scattered. What does that term scattered mean? I talked about it a couple weeks ago. I shared with it the term scattered. What do we see in that term scattered? What, what are we envisioning? Say it loud, Greg. Yeah, so who's, what's, what's the seed? No. No. Yes. You are the seed. You're going to take the word of God with you, but you're the seed. That's, that's what I was talking about in the context of the scripture. When they were scattered, when they were scattered, scattered comes from the word seed, and the people were scattered and became seed in the various communities all over the place. Sure, they took with them the word of God, so it wasn't themselves, but they were the seed, and with what was in them, what God did in them, they would be able to share that with others. And that's why in chapter 8, we see Philip going to Samaria. And so that scattering has to do with you and I being scattered because we can get comfortable and sit in the, you know, fourth seat of the third row. But God wants to scatter us, move us around. Oh, we can come back. We can come back and have a festival in Jerusalem or whatever, you know, we can do that. We can do that every week or, you know, a couple times a week. But I don't want to fill up every day of your schedule with things here because then you won't be out and about being scattered to, the, to do the work in the field. To take your family somewhere. Take your family out to the park somewhere. And while you're there, go up and meet somebody else. Take a little extra food with you if you're having a picnic and maybe invite somebody to join with you. These are just practical ideas. And then you can say, hey, you know, why are you doing this? And then you get to tell them about your love for Jesus as it comes up in conversation. You don't have to scare them to death. But you can just befriend people. You can go walking around your block. Stop and see somebody. Help them. They're out there raking their leaves. Pick up their, hey, you look, you've been working hard. Let me do that for a few moments. Give you a break. And you do that. And then they start thinking, why would you do that? And then you start talking to them about Jesus and inviting them to, to church possibly or inviting them over to your home. I met a guy the other day going up and I'd met him before, but it had been a while since I'd seen him. Older guy, he's retired. And he's out there, and he's walking down the street. And I said, yeah, you know, and, and it came up, and, you know, I said, what, what did you do in life to retire from? She says, I was a plumber. And then I told him what I did. I was a pastor. He says, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. And then Greg was over at our house, and Greg came out, and I introduced him to Greg. I said, this is our plumber from the church. And so they got to meet each other real quickly, real briefly. We didn't have a long conversation but we just renewed that acquaintance, so hopefully one of these days I can talk more. I don't know where he goes to church, if he goes to church or anything. But you know what? How do we reach out if we don't say something? We don't do something, but when we do, man. We had a guy here last week that I played golf with and asked him, you know, to come to church, and he came. And he loved it. He loved all of you people. I'm hoping to see him back again. I text him this morning just to tell him, hey, I love you and your family. Just, uh, you know, look forward to seeing you again soon. And that's great. So we have to do those kinds of things. I called some of you this week, text some of you, had conversations with some of you, you know, and, but that's what it's all about because we've got to encourage one another. Because you can't encourage somebody once and think, okay, well, I encouraged them once. They should have it all down now. Or, you know, they should be all right now because I gave them a, a word or something. Yeah, it goes over and over and over again. I mean, how many times do I need to be encouraged? You get busy in the things that you do. I mean, you got to have life and you got things going on in your life. Wow. So Jesus commissioned us all 
to go into all the world and preach the gospel, to share the good news of Jesus. And we're to be like, like seed that's planted in other cities and nations around the world, or we can even say our neighborhood, because we got a lot of people around here, right? Yeah. So Jesus commissioned us to do this. So our study is not simply learn a, uh, to, to simply learn about what took place, but continue to share the gospel empowered by the Holy Spirit. Through you, people will be saved. Through you, miracles will happen. Through you, the lame will walk. Through you, the blind will see. All kinds of healings will take place, and people will be transformed into the person that God intended them to be through you partnering along with Jesus, empowered by his spirit. They'll be set free from the traps of Satan. How many of you know somebody who's in bondage in some way? Come on, how many of you know somebody who's trapped in, in either drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever it might be, you know, um, workaholic, uh, whatever. Their relationships with their family isn't quite, right. come on, how many of you know somebody like that, right? Virtually all of you, I would, I would think. You know somebody like that. If you, do, if you don't, you don't know very many people. There's people right here going through stuff like that. Right here. But this is the right place to be. Come here, my friend. You want to share? I'm going to let you share. Come on. This is a good spot for it. God just brought it back to my mind and said, this is the spot. So here you go. I'm going to stand right here. Uh, my name is Jose Navarro, and I, I, mean, I want to thank God first. You know, we should thank God every day because I believe in prayers. I pray a lot. Uh, you know, I have this issue problem of drugs. I think it's my ninth, tenth service every Sunday. And when my girlfriend, my girlfriend and her daughter came to Epic, I pray for her a lot too, for her, her, her sister too, her brothers too, everyone. I know I can see the family here one day. I believe that. I believe it. I know this church is going to grow up, too. I believe it, too. I'll be praying for the pastor. Thank you, pastor. Give me the chance. And, and yesterday I went to a park. I think my brother in the back. I talked to him. And I listened to his words. And I said, thank, thank God I talked to him. Because it did help to, think, to put this in my mind, my heart, to put this decision. I want to make a promise. Because I know everyone break promise in front of God. I break a lot of them. But this one, I'm not going to break it. This one, I want one. I last three months, doing drugs, I was clean for three months. I went down again. I'm going to have this month clean again. I'm going to start over again. It's okay. But I get out of my feet. I tell God, you know how much I want to change, you know. I want to make myself a different man now. I want to I wanna be a Christian now. I want to be a testimony, a real testimony, a real one. Hey, this is for God, I say, for my family. I think for my girlfriend, too, this is Maria. She supports me a lot of stupid things, but I think her, too, because I still, I still with her. And I take the pastor, everyone, and I put in my prayer. I promise in front of you guys, in front of God first, I'm never going to drink no more. I'm not going to do drugs no more. I last uh, Yesterday, I drink. Last, yesterday, I did drink. I can be honest with you, but I tell myself, why I drink? I'm not going to get, I'm not buzzed, I'm not, the, for what drinking? For what? I said, God, last time, I said, God, forgive me. In the morning, I'm going to go to church today, this Sunday. I'm going to promise because I feel inside my heart. That's why I'm doing it. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Stay right here. The Bible says in James, confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. But he also needs you. He needs you praying for him. He needs you standing with him. He needs you in fellowship with him. He needs partnership. He needs people he can trust. And he's trusted you this morning with his life and sharing some of these things that he hadn't shared publicly with you, but we've been walking through this for many, many months. And so this is a day that you did something here that not many are strong enough to do. And there's there's people here that are going through other kinds of things, maybe similar to yours or maybe way different, but still find themselves trapped. 
I want you to do one thing. I want you to stand with me. I want you to reach with one hand towards him and praying for him. I want you to reach the other hand towards heaven. And if you're going through something yourself, give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. All of you can lift both your hands in two different directions. But if you have something with that other hand, just be saying, Lord, I'm giving this part of my life to you. But one hand reaching out towards Jose. He always calls himself Novato. This is Novato. He just goes by his last name. But Jose is his name. Got family here in the church. But this man, he loves Jesus. I don't doubt that. But the enemy has tried to hold him bound. And he keeps working, trying to get set free. We're going to believe together that God sets him free. And it'll be, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, free at last. Thank God I'm free at last. Totally free right here. Different context, Martin Luther King Jr. said, but you know what? We're going to believe right here that God is going to walk him with him through this, and we're going to see absolute freedom take place starting today. Amen? Come on. Come on. Go ahead and pray in the Spirit for you that just speak in tongues. Go ahead and speak in tongues. Pray in the Spirit this morning. We are believing. Nav uh, uh, Jose just mentioned this. Not only here, went all over line. People at home, you guys are going through stuff. There's various people going through things. Confess that for yourself. Pray for Jose, but pray for yourself as well and saying, God, I need to be set free from this situation going on in my life, the things that I'm, I'm trapped by. God, I release it to you. It might be sexual addictions and different kinds of things along that line. It might be other kinds of things and attitudes and heartache and anger and stuff like that that one guy went through and never got it right and ended up shooting himself. God, we don't want those things to happen. We want people to be set free. Because whom you've set free is free indeed. So, Lord, thank you for today setting Jose free, confessing his faults one to another that he may be healed. So thank you for his healing today in Jesus' name. The anointing of God that rests upon his life. And, Lord, the message that he is, will share with people will be amazing because they'll see the, the transparency and the love for God and being able to just share it. Hey, once I was bound, but now I'm free. Now I'm free. So thank you, Jesus, for touching Jose. Thank you, Lord, for bringing freedom to his life. Thank you, Lord, that you've given him a, a pure heart, a good heart, and that he's going to be able to walk with the power of your spirit in the righteous ways of God. And Lord, no longer have these, this addictive nature at all because, Lord, you've given him a new nature by your spirit. A, a, a nature by you, a, he's supernatural. A supernatural child of God, he is. Submitted to you, walking in new ways. Walking the ways that you've talked to him about. And you've given him the power to walk in. So thank you, Lord, for setting him free from all those things and now walking in that. In, in, that. in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Well, I pray for, um, I want to... Ask you to be fair. I think, I think for my nephew, Luis, he brought me right here. He invited me. Yeah. For him, I'm here right now. For him. He's not here right now, but I think for him, too, because he said, he invited me, come on, go. I brought you to church. Yeah. I said, one day, one day, go. you know, I will say that, but the day came, you know, yeah, I'm here right now. He's not here, but I'm here right now. Yeah. You know, but it's okay. I, I need to pray for him and for my brother, Luis, and Bonnie. You know, she's uh. She released uh, cancer. Thank God for that. You know, she's released. She, she, she had to be over here thanking God. Amen. I pray for her. That's it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. amen. You know, Luis did that. He invited his uncle, and Jose gave his life to Jesus. We prayed for Bonnie, and she came through cancer and is living well. We've seen Jesus do amazing miracles. Sometimes we're so silent about them. We don't share them because people don't see those things happening except those who are maybe inside the walls. But won't it be a great day when we start doing this stuff outside the walls and you start doing it outside the walls and people in your neighborhood mark you and say, that person does things on behalf of God and people are being healed. 
And people start knocking on your door and say, hey, I heard you pray for people. Many people have been healed. Will you pray for me? Wouldn't that be amazing? I'm, a, I'm praying that that will happen to many of us in this place. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Yeah. Then you invite them in and barbecue them up a nice filet mignon or something and eat together. Or a hot dog on a stick. Doesn't matter. But just loving people. Go with me to Acts chapter 8, verse 2. Man, our time is gone. I can't do this. Because if I get into this, I'm going to keep on going, and that's going to take us way past our time. I, I just want you to move to this right now. You heard Jose confess. I'm not going to ask you guys to confess anything, to say anything, except for the fact that you can identify in maybe a different area of your life, but you know you need to be set free from something. There's something going on, a relationship, whatever it might be. I've mentioned several things already, and you're thinking about other stuff. We're not going to you know, focus and go like, oh, I wonder what their problem is. That's not life at LifeGate. That's not the way we do things around here. But that you would, I know you lifted your hand, some of you, you know, and I don't know what you were praying, but you said, yeah, I lifted my hand and I was giving something to Jesus. You want to stand and say, I proclaim healing of that situation today. I want you to stand up where you are. Come on, be bold. I gave it away this morning. I gave it away this morning. Yeah. You can stand right where you are. You can come up front. You want to say? Yeah. Come on, others of you, be bold. Be bold this morning. Come on. Come on. Be bold this morning. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Good. Um, so as we were praying for Jose, I don't know um, your story. I don't know your childhood. But... I want to, I felt like the Lord said, it's a generational stronghold in your family. That alcoholism is a generational stronghold. That this isn't something that started with you, but this started with your father or your grandfather or other men or women in your life. And him coming up here is making a statement of saying, I'm breaking that. It doesn't matter his age. There's never, it's never too late to break a generational curse, a generational stronghold. I'm doing that with my kids right now. I am fighting Satan <laughs> on behalf of my children. Addiction is typically a generational stronghold. It is something that's passed from one to the next to the next. And so as pastor was talking, are there things in your life, maybe they're not in your life, maybe they're not yours, but you carry them for the people in your life that you know are just so bound and this morning, God wants to break generational strongholds in your family. Gloria and I were talking about this at the altar up here that whole time. That's exactly what we were talking about. I didn't know he was going to come up and share a testimony. I didn't know he was going to come up here and admit his sin, his stronghold, his struggle in front of people that he doesn't fully know. Some of you have been at this place for a long time and you've never fully admitted your struggle. You're still holding on to things that you have no business holding on to because you can't control them. They're things that have been done to you, said to you, spoken over you, told you that's how we do things, that's how our family does it. You're never gonna get over it, that's just you. But that isn't just you because you're a child of God and God doesn't say you gotta live in that. So as pastor is asking you to respond, be really honest this morning. If it, You don't have to come up here and take the mic and say, this is what, I'm not sharing my kid's generational stronghold that I have to break and that they're gonna have to continue to break when they make their own choices. But right now as their parent, I get to wage warfare on behalf of my children. You might have to do that for your children that aren't in the room. You might have to do that for your brother, your sister, your parents that are still bound by the things that have held on to them for way too long. And so I would encourage you to get down here. 
Because you can sit in your seat and say, God, it's yours. I, I've tried. But when we take that step of faith, when we come up and ad admit it, and again, not vocally, but to Jesus, between you and him and say, God, I am tired. I will not let this keep me awake at night anymore. I will not let this steal my joy. I will not let this ruin relationships any longer. God wants to set you free from that. And I know time is time. But you don't have time to just keep wasting. You don't have time to live miserable. You don't have time to not ask for forgiveness or to forgive. People hurt us. I've been really hurt. But then people come in here like, how are you so happy? How do you have three kids by yourself? Because I surrendered it to Jesus a long time ago and said, I can't help what was done to me or my kids, but I can change my outlook on life. I can change the way I view the Lord through this process. I can change the things I speak into my children's life and the people that surround them and speak over them. And we did that last week over my daughter. Is she still struggling? Yes. She's still breaking out in hives. They aren't completely gone. But that doesn't mean God isn't who he says he is. That doesn't mean that God isn't a healer, that he isn't a chain breaker, that he isn't a restorer of people and hearts and bodies. But it takes us saying, I don't care what people think. I don't care if I don't get to lunch on time. I'm going to let God take it today. Because I hold it another week, that's another week of life that I've let the enemy steal from me. Every day that we choose to hold it is a day we say, okay, Satan, you can just keep doing your thing. That is exactly what we're saying by not letting it go and saying, God, I can't. In my own strength, in my own power, I can't. But I need you to show up, Jesus. And I am tired. I am done. I cannot and I will not carry this anymore. So I don't know what's going on behind me. Jonathan's gonna play. I don't know if Pastor wants the mic back, but I'm gonna ask you now, like don't wait for someone else to move. He's standing here because he's responding and he's letting Jesus minister to him. So if it's you, if it's a child, if it's a loved one, if it's a spouse that's not here that isn't serving Jesus, I'm gonna say, get down here. Don't go home with it because then all of this was for nothing for you today. All of this, you sitting here, you giving two hours of your time to Jesus this morning and not actually letting him deal with you and not letting him be who he promises to be and walking out saying, my pride is just not gonna let me move. I don't want people to wonder why I'm up there. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about the details. Nobody cares about the drama, the gossip. What we care about is your heart. What we care about is the salvation of your family members. What we care about is that you walk in joy, day in and day out, regardless of your situation, that you can get up every day and say, I'm gonna choose joy, because my joy does not come from the people in my life. My joy does not come from my situation. My joy comes from the giver of joy. My joy comes from being filled with the Holy Spirit, of being so full of Jesus that I can't sit there and hold it anymore. So there's people down here, and if you still feel like you are fighting, if you are struggling in your seat right now, that's the Holy Spirit saying, move, move, move. I want to set you free. Today is your day to be set free. Today is the day for your children to be set free. Today is the day for your spouse to be set free from illness, from addiction, from mental strife, from medication addiction from anger, from resentment that you have held way too long. You are still not healed from the things that were done to you. God says, you can be. You can be. You have chosen to hold that because it gives us a little bit of comfort. I've sat in that. I've sat in that with a husband who betrayed me. And I wanted to just be angry and say, why, why me? What did I do wrong? 
I'm in church, I'm raising three kids. What did I do to deserve that? But it wasn't me. It wasn't me. There's a bondage that was there. There's a stronghold that was there that had not been broken. And so you constantly find yourself. I'm still talking because I know there's people that haven't moved that need to move. And I'm gonna be really honest. And some of you I know, I know your story. And when we constantly can't do anything but sob through the bringing it up, there's still something that we haven't surrendered. If it still makes us physically sick to think about, we haven't surrendered it. I can tell you my story, like telling you the story of Peter Rabbit. <laughs> like I can tell it to you as a story now, not because it doesn't matter, not because I want to brush it off, but because God has done such an inner deep healing of my heart because I have allowed him to, because I have been vulnerable in safe places, because, because I have spoken the reality of my situation, because when we speak it, it brings freedom. When we let people in, it brings freedom because the enemy wants us to be alone with our thoughts. He wants us to self-isolate. He wants us to beat ourselves up. Why me? Why me? Why this? Why that? What did I do? I did everything wrong. But Jesus says, I come that you may have joy. I come that you may have peace. I come that you may have life. And life is not well lived if you're miserable every single day. If every single day you're saying, I, I'm stuck. I, just, I am just skating through life. I am surviving. I can stand here and tell you I am no longer surviving. I am thriving in the place God wants for me because I've surrendered it. I've let him heal and restore me. And restoration doesn't always mean reconciliation. But God restores. He brings back the joy of our salvation. He hides us under his wing. He wants to shelter you. So if you still want to come, please do that. If you are struggling, and you are just really having a hard time, lift your hand in your seat and I will come to you. But God wants to meet you here today. So Jesus, we thank you that you are who you say you are, God. We thank you that you come to bring life, that the purpose of your sacrifice was to give life and life eternally, that you never meant for any of us to live in darkness, that you never meant for us to live in despair, you never meant for us to live in sickness, whether caused by things that happen to us or internal strife that we just can't get over. Jesus, you are faithful. Your promises are true. Your word is true. It is alive. It is living. It is active within us when we let it be. But it takes us being a part. It takes us letting go of control and surrendering and saying, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I have kept this from you. Does he know it? Yeah, he knows. But have you said, Jesus, it's yours. I cannot walk this out anymore. So Father, I pray for a breakthrough this morning. I pray for freedom. I pray that bondages would be broken, that strongholds would be broken, that works of the enemy that oppression of things that have been brought into our homes out of our control, of things that have been spoken of or over us that were ungodly, that were evil, whether as a child, I strongly believe that there are a lot of people in this room that have childhood trauma that you have not healed from. Because of shame, you have kept it. But Jesus wants you to know that that shame is not yours that what was done to you is not your fault. That you are chosen, that you are loved, that you have a purpose, that your pain is for a purpose. That when you let God heal you, he is going to use your pain to bring life to people who are hurting. Because his desire is for all his children to be reconciled unto himself. 
And for that to happen, there cannot be a wedge between you and Jesus. There has to be walking hand in hand saying, God, I need you every single day, every single minute. And if I mess up today and if I fall back today, I know that you are going to walk with me again the next hour. I don't have to wait for tomorrow to start over. But God wants to free you this morning. God wants to heal your heart. He wants to heal your mind. He wants to bring you rest at night when you haven't slept for years. There's somebody here that who hasn't slept in years, that you have not had solid, sound sleep in several years. And God is saying, no more. Give it to me and I will give you rest. I desire for you to have rest. I desire for you to have peace. I desire to, for you to know your worth, that you are worthy, that you are mine, that I died for you. By name, Jesus died for you. that we speak, put our name into scripture. If you have to put your name in there, I had to do that for a really long time. The Lord is Carly's shepherd. Carly shall not want. Speak it. Write your name into scripture so that it becomes so personal. So like, oh, Jesus died you. You were bought with a price. No, Carly was bought for a price. Jonathan was bought for a price. Evangelina, whatever, whoever is in here, whoever's not in here, every single human on earth, whether they have surrendered to Jesus or not, was bought at a price. They just haven't come to recognize it yet. They haven't accepted his free gift. But speak truth over your life. Speak truth over your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews who are struggling, your coworker. Write it out for them. Plug their name into scripture and say, hey, this is what the Lord gave me for you. But it doesn't always just happen because they say, okay, God, it's yours. I'm going to go to lunch now. It's a daily battle. I have not been perfect in that battle. I've gotten in my flesh. But then I ask for forgiveness. I ask my children for forgiveness. And I say, God, I need you. We sing that old song how I need you, God, I need you. Every hour, I need you. That isn't just some words that someone thought sounded good together. It is the truth that not one hour, one minute, one second can be lived in fullness without the presence of Jesus. So stay here as long as you need to stay here. If you need, still need to come, come. Jonathan is gonna lead us in a song and like we said earlier, sing it out, speak it. There's something about hearing your own voice, declaring the truth of the, God, the truth of the Lord. I don't care what your voice sounds like. I don't care if you can sing on pitch and harmony. Just sing. Declare it for yourself this morning and believe that when you walk out of this place, when you walk away from this altar, not even when you walk out the doors, when you walk back to your seat, that you are new, that, you are, that it is here. It is left here at the foot of the cross that Jesus paid the biggest sacrifice for you. It's Communion Sunday. And I know we haven't done that yet. But before you take that cup this morning, make sure you've given it all to him. Make sure you truly value, honor, respect the greatest sacrifice anyone could ever make for you before you partake of that cup this morning that symbolizes his body and his blood that was broken and poured out for every single thing that you will walk through in your life.
close to you and never let me go I lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend your Oh! 
all for you, it's all for you. It's all for you, Jesus. Hey, I will make room for you to do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. And I will make room for you. Do whatever you want to. Do whatever you want to. Oh, I will make room for you. Hey, to do whatever you want to. Do whatever you want to. Cause your way is better Oh, your way is better You know, I want you right where you are. You're making confessions to the Lord. You realize that his body was broken. We've talked about the promises. We talked about the things that Jesus did by coming to earth to make our life better right here, right now. And we talked about what his blood did for us and forgiving us of our sin. And those are the things we've been dealing with right here and now of things that we want to grow in the Jesus and, and get rid of things of the past, get rid of, of generational curses, all of those kinds of things that have been placed upon us or, or the enemy tries to trap us in those kinds of things, and today is a day of freedom. And so when you're comfortable, I just want you right where you are, just, just submitting yourself to the Lord and receiving the communion. You have it in your hands. Just re Does anybody need one? Anybody not have a communion cup and you need one? Okay, all right. Probably just me, Walter. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you have one there? Oh, okay, here. Can you give that to somebody else? Anybody else need one? Okay, they've got it. Was that Jonathan? whenever you feel comfortable. And Jesus, thank you for what you did for us on the cross at Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for going to the whipping post and having your body beaten and broken apart for us, that we might be healed here in the things that we go through, the daily processes of life, the physical things. And Lord, thank you for you shedding your blood for us, that we might have eternal life with you our sins being forgiven and we made, being made right with you. So we thank you for that, Jesus. So today, Lord, we receive of this bread and this cup in glory and honor to you, surrendering our lives to you and thanking you for all that you have done. You said, take and eat, take and drink. This do in remembrance of everything you did for us to provide for, to provide for us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead. Cause you are faithful in every season. Here is where I come. Every This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every word and every crown. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. Oh, I will make room for you. 
to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you, for you, for you, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Do whatever you want to. Oh, I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God, our hearts have been opened up, made bare before you this morning. Not just one person, not just two, but this whole congregation and those online. Many, many people, many, many families have been affected by what has taken place today. To find freedom, to find joy, to find peace, to find breakthrough. These things have happened today. And Jesus, we're not walking from this place, but those things that have happened here in this place, we're taking with us. Because the world needs the things that have taken place in us. And we get to give those things away. We get to give away the things that you've done in our lives. And we get to help bring them to a place where they can receive those same kinds of freedoms. So God, we thank you today for your love and your grace, your mercy, having been applied to, the, to our hearts and us, God, re going down deep into the recesses of our souls and bringing this stuff up so that we can walk in that newness of life that you promised us in Romans 6. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We're walking in that today. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name for all that you have done. Bless my brothers and sisters as we go from this place where we have come to love God. Now we walk out of this place, this church, to love people. Love God, love people. That's what you've called us to do. And the greatest way we can love them is give them Jesus. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless your people. Bless my friends, my family. Those here and those that are online, in Jesus' name, bless them as they go their way to do the work of the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. And next week, we'll be talking about that, the kingdom of God and uh, some other things as well. Hey, God bless you. Fel stay here, fellowship. Stay here as long as you want. This is your house. This is your house.